Let me begin by welcoming all those who are joining us tonight for our Wednesday night Bible session. I do pray and believe that your day has been well. Let us bow our heads and open with a word of prayer. Our mighty and everlasting Father, we come before your presence, Almighty God, because you've been so gracious to us, O oh Father. Even during these times, O oh Mary Father, you've kept us, O oh God, and now, O oh God, we come back with thanksgiving in our hearts, O oh Lord Jesus, lifting your name up above everything else, O oh Lord Jesus. We pray, O oh Mary Father, Lord, that you may open up our eyes of understanding, O oh God, as we go through the scriptures, O oh Mary Father, and even learn more about spiritual warfare, O oh God. Our eyes are not on the enemy, O oh God, but rather on our Lord Jesus Christ during this session, O oh Mary Father. Neither are they on our strength, O oh Mary God, because it's not by our might or strength, but by the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you, O oh God, and choose not to lean to our own understanding, O oh God. We open up our hearts that you may minister to us, O oh God, by your angels, O oh my Father. May your word bring us to a place of understanding, a place, O oh God, of, of walking, O oh God, in the comprehension of your word, O oh Father. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Once again, welcome to our night uh, service. Uh, as we all know that we've been going through this series of spiritual warfare and now we are in part three. And my subtopic tonight is understanding our authority and power in Christ Jesus. Understanding authority and power. The principle of fasting's fast. The word of God instructs us to seek first the kingdom of God. From Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says that, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that men are in pursuit of, they will follow us. They will be added unto us. So we are never to seek things. We are to seek first in any situation that we find ourselves in. Be it financial, be it marital, be it social, in any situation that we find ourselves in, the principle of first things first apply. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and how to operate in his righteousness, then we shall find solution. As believers, we are meant to thrive and be prosperous only in the kingdom of God. Christ said that they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. If Christ was not of the world, then we are not also of this world. So we cannot align ourselves to the way the world finds solution to things. We have to align ourselves to the way the kingdom of heaven finds solution to things. Meaning that we are not of this world, but citizens of heaven. We've been given a place in God's kingdom. We are also the children of light. And hence, we'll only be victorious when we walk in light. Amen? We need to walk in light. That is required of us. Even though our righteousness is not our own, is of Christ Jesus, we are required to walk in light because it's only in light are we prosperous, are we victorious, are we able to overcome the enemy. This is our area of domain. We are children of the day and not of the night. In our pursuit of the kingdom of God, however, comes with a great opposition, and the Bible warns us that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and the violent lay claim to it. So that's a sign of spiritual warfare. The violent lay claim to it. Even though our spiritual or rather our righteousness is by faith in Christ Jesus, and we have been justified in him, our establishment as children of God in the kingdom comes with great opposition, simply because of the thrones and the powers that were in operation in our flesh before we were incorporated into the kingdom of heaven, and hence the need to understand the authority and the power that you have been given in Christ. If there was no opposition, then we wouldn't need any authority and power. We'll just live and enter the kingdom of God and live the way we want. But that is not so. The Bible has told us that since the days of John the Baptist until now, 
the kingdom of heaven has always suffered violence. There's that opposition. There's that force that is trying to work against the will of God in our lives, the will of God in our destiny, the will of God concerning our marriages, the will of God on our children. There's that negative force that is always working against, trying to, to sabotage what God has ordained. But those who are violent, those who know how to operate in the kingdom of God, they lay claim to the promises of God. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 9 verse 1 that then Jesus called the 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all demons and all power to cure diseases. We all have a call in our lives to serve the one who has called us. Many are called, but a few are chosen. Many are called, but a few are chosen. I'll talk about that on, uh, in another setting. But however, we've been sent out as sheep among wolves, but also we have been instructed to be wise. We have been instructed to be wise. Wisdom is the ability to apply that which is known and understood. It is the ability to apply that which is known and understood. You can know something, but fail to understand it. You can know and understand something, but fail to implement it in your life. Now, wisdom comes in with the ability to, to apply that which you know and already understand. It is important to have the knowledge of God, for my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So knowledge is very important, and it is equally important to understand what you know and to apply it because the Bible tells us that the Lord looks down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there is any who understands. So understanding is very important. The Lord is looking for not only that picture, that person who have a head knowledge, but also that person who is able to comprehend what the word of God says. That person who understands because understanding is the ability to, 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 to comprehend something, a subject. Many times we have been confused about power and authority. To me, rather let me just take that again, sorry. Many times we've confused power and authority to mean one and the same thing, but is not always. They are two different things. They are both different and used differently for different purposes. The word power in the Greek language is the word dunamis, to mean force or ability to affect a miraculous power. Dynamis is the word power. It means the ability to affect something, that force, that energy that is required to affect something. And on the other side, authority is exhaustion, meaning a privilege and capacity to exercise an instruction. The judicial right to rule over something or to exercise your will or God's will in this case. So the word power means dynamis, and the word authority means exosia. Exosia is the legal right to exercise something that you have been instructed to do. The difference is best explained in the original mandate of man before the fall. If you turn to scriptures, the Bible tells us that the, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness to rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over the livestock and over all the earth itself and every creature that crawls upon it. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created them male and female and he created them and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creature that crawls upon the earth. After God creating man in his own image and likeness, he did not abandon him to live his own life the way he wanted to, for man will act out of character. But he determined how he was going to operate in his image and likeness through God's authority and power. Man was given the right to rule over God's creation the right to rule over God's creation, and that's authority. And therefore man had that judicial right, that legal right 
to dominate the world. When the word says that, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, to rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air. That is authority being given to man. He had permission. Authority is permission to exercise his charge over God's creation. And all creation would respond to him. When you have authority, everything responds to you. This is the key to the kingdom of God. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. The forces of the kingdom of darkness will not prevail against it. Why? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind here on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven. That is authority. When you have authority, whatever you bind, you have that legal right to bind. You have that legal right to rule and to reign over something. You have that legal right to cast out demonic forces, to pull down uh, altars that have been put in place. This is authority. And this is the ultimate authority in Christ to the believers. And after being given that authority, man is given the power to propagate that authority and to perpetuate the kingdom of God here on earth. Because authority does not work alone. There needs also to be power. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. That is the power that was given to man. This is the ability to enforce and is usually evident in the physical. To subdue means to overcome. To subdue means to bring under control. To subdue means to conquer, to conquer, to defeat, to overpower, and also to overcome. That is the work of power. But the fall of man changed this divine order. And it was restored in Christ. How did the fall of man change it? Authority was given to man and that was only positional. He had to make a choice. What that means is that man's authority in the kingdom depended highly on his relationship with God. All authority is proximity centric. The closer you are to the center of power, the higher the authority. If you enter army, the army, those who are down there, they have some authority. But the more they graduate, the more they are promoted to higher levels of uh, service, the closer they move to the center of power. And the closer they move to the center of power, the higher the authority. The closer we are to God, the higher the authority that's vested on us. The higher the level of authority also means that the higher the level of obedience and, and humility. So, for us to be close to God, we have to walk in higher levels of obedience and higher levels of humility. This one will equate to also higher levels of authority. If you ask yourself, yes, you've been given the power over the fish, the power and, and the authority to bind and to cast out demonic forces, but why is it that when we are about to do that thing, it does not take effect? It's because there is something more that is required of us. We cannot just go outside there and cast out demonic forces. We also have to work on our relationship with God. Paul, the apostle of Christ, appointed by God and not by men, writes to the Philippians about the attitude of Christ and says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ, who existing in the form of God, do not consider himself equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. There was a level of humility in him and obedience, even to the point of death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all name. This is authority. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Because Christ was walked in humility and obedience even to the point of death, therefore he was exalted above every other name. And that's how Christ gained back his authority. The first Adam lost his authority over God's creation here on earth through disobedience. But the second Adam, who is Christ, regained that authority through his obedience and humility, even to the point of death. Then when man lost his authority in the garden, he became illegal and he had to be thrown out, but has gained it back through Christ Jesus. And when our obedience is complete, this is the art of war. The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of this world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. These are the weapons that we have been given as Christians. We tear down arguments and every presumptuous presumption set up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive of every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience as soon as your obedience is complete. As soon as what? Our obedience is complete in Christ. As soon as we walk in that level of obedience, then we'll be able to take charge of every situation, to rule over every situation, to bring everything that is opposing the knowledge of Christ into subduction. It is only through our obedience. It is proximity-centric. Our closeness to God, our obedience to God, as we draw nigh to him, the levels, that, the levels of obedience are required to us are higher and higher. In spiritual warfare, we exercise authority over every demonic power and throne when our obedience is complete. Noting that this is not a salvation question. It is possible to live a defeated life and still go to heaven. It is possible to live a defeated life and still go to heaven if you don't understand this. The creation waits in eager expectation of the revelation of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not by its own will, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. The whole creation is waiting for us to come out as sons of the Father, as sons of God. There is a difference between children and sons. Children do not have a sense of responsibility. They keep on doing mistakes. They keep on going against the word of God. But still the children of God. Still they are going to heaven. But sons have come to, to that place of obedience, that place of responsibility. And therefore they are able to perpetuate God's kingdom here on earth. That's why creation is growing and waiting for the revelation of sons. The sons of God, the sons of light. On, on the other hand, the power given to us is irrevocable because it is a gift. So we've known how authority comes to be. We've been given that authority, but we can only maintain it when our obedience is complete. It is the legal right to exercise authority over something, judicial matters. We have to have that authority. But the closer we move and draw close to God, the higher the level of authority that is bestowed on us. But on the other hand, there is also the power. And how does power come into play? We are told that the power that is given to us is irrevocable because it is a gift. So power is just a gift. When Lucifer fell, his authority was stripped off, but he still maintained his power. Man's fall was a departure from God's authority, but he continued to propagate and to perpetuate his corrupt will over the earth. For God's gift and his call are irrevocable. 
according to Romans chapter 29, verse 11. Just as you who formerly disobeyed God have now received mercy through their disobedience, the gift of God are irre irrevocable. On power, the disciples were instructed to go wait in Jerusalem. And behold, from Luke chapter 24, verse 49, and behold, I am sending you the promise of my Father upon you, but remain in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. In our latter state as believers, we do not depend on our physical strength, but the force or power to enforce God's will is by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So as Christians, we do not try to wrestle against flesh. That's what Paul means, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces in high places. And because there are spiritual forces in high places, our strength, our power does not, call, does not come in the physical. It comes by the Holy Spirit. And that's why the disciples were instructed by Jesus Christ to go and wait to go and wait in the upper room until the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, comes upon them and clothes them. It is the Holy Spirit that enacts, that enforces that which Christ has given to us. The Bible tells us in Ze Ze the book of Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, that, so he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you become like a plain. Before who? Zerubbabel, the mountains that stand before you. The challenges that are before you. The walls of limitations that are before you. Everything that the kingdom of darkness has put in place to negate that which God has placed in you, they will come down, rolling down, not by your strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have authority in Christ, and we also have the power of God through the Holy Spirit. Authority comes by the blood of Jesus Christ upon our lives, the blood that speaks better things concerning us. Once we have been set free, once we are in that place of righteousness, that place of obedience, that place of humility, that place where we experience the mercy of God, that place where we have nothing in common with the enemy, then our obedience is complete and our authority is effected. But we also need the Holy Spirit to effect that authority that has been given to us so that whatever we bind here on earth is also bound in heaven. And whatever we lose here on earth is also loosed in heaven. That is how authority and power works. Every time that Jesus Christ ministered to the sick, he cast out demons and he laid his hand on them. There was the casting out, the exercising of the authority over those, do, uh, over those dom, uh, dominions or rather demonic forces that were against. And we know that every sickness, every situation has got a spiritual angle. So you have to first of all bind the strong man. Once you've bound the strong man, then you are able to effect by the power of the Holy Spirit to admonish that which you are supposed to do, to do that which, to enforce that which you have been instructed by God. So, in conclusion, now that we know and understand the authority and the power of God and how it works, let us therefore go out there and perpetuate the kingdom of God wherever we go. We understand that this is spiritual warfare. But our weapons of warfare are mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Once we put our faith in Christ Jesus, once we work out our salvation with fear and trembling the way Paul instructs us to do, once our obedience is complete, because you cannot, we cannot afford to be disobedient on the battleground. We have to be in tune with God. We have to listen to every instruction that he's giving us. Every time David uh, 
faced a battle. He used to call on God and to acknowledge him and to ask him, should I pursue this way? Should I go this way? And God will tell him, do this and this and this and that and that. So his obedience enacted the victory that he required. His obedience gave him that authority that he needed to stand before the enemy. And the enemy knows that. When we are disobedient, when we are not walking in humility, then we can never, we can never enforce God's kingdom here on earth. There will always be a challenge. Once the enemy has a legal right against us, he will always overcome us. But we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. We are not blind to his ways. We have to learn to walk in obedience and in humility in order to walk in the authority of God. Behold, I have given you authority to tread over snakes and scorpions and over the power, all the power of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. The authority and the power that has been given to us is for this reason, so that nothing may harm us, nothing may overcome us, nothing may overtake us, nothing may discourage us. As long as we are walking in the power and authority of Christ, as long as we know who we are, then the kingdom of God will be established in our lives. Let's bow our heads tonight and pray. Our Father, we thank you once again for your mercies, for your grace, and for your presence in this place, Almighty God. Lord, we ask, Almighty Father, that you may cause us to be humble in your presence, that you may help us to walk in obedience in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Almighty God, that you may come to the full knowledge of your glory in Christ, the treasures that are hidden in Christ, so that, Almighty Father, Lord, the kingdom of God may be established in our lives, O oh God. We render our hearts before your God. Such as tonight, O oh God, if there is anything that is against your will, O oh my Father, remove it, O oh my Father. Cleanse us by your spirit, O oh my Father, so that we may be able to stand before you. We bless you and we worship you, Lord of oh God. In Jesus' name we do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you very much for tuning in up to this moment. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God be with you until the next time that you meet. Bye.